All right. Good to go. All right, thanks. Good evening, everyone. These slides will be online and I'll share a link um, in case you want to see them or go back to anything. Uh, today, my presentation will be about testing, one second, testing React components with Storybook JS. All right, I'm Axel. I'm on Twitter. You can find me here, Axel Gone. I currently work at HubSpot. I have experience building things for the web, WordPress sites, custom sites, React, um, lots of different JavaScript frameworks. Um, in general, I think it's really cool how we can share things and build things on the web. Um, that's what I currently do at HubSpot. I work on our CMS product, so to help people build things for the web. And I really like the outdoors, the great indoors, anything space related, Star Trek and the Expanse are my favorite shows, um, metal, trap, crafting, and writing. HubSpot, who sponsored our food today, we have some swag on the table, some stickers and some uh, chapsticks if you want to grab them. Here are just uh, two links for our uh, CMS engineering and development positions, which is something that I do, just working on a product to help people make more things for the web. So without further ado, to Storybook. How many people here have worked with Storybook? Okay, cool, a good half. So Storybook is a Storybook is a tool that allows you to develop UI components in isolation. Uh, it's compatible with a lot of languages. I'm doing this talk on React, but you can use it with HTML, Vue, um, I think pre-React, and regular HTML, CSS components, which makes it really flexible and makes it really powerful. Why is Storybook important? Storybook um, can really help supercharge your development experience whenever you're making things for the web. It acts as a living style guide, so it's automatically updated. Every time you build a component, the Storybook will be updated, unlike your more static style guides. Um, and this means that you can share it with others and you have a single source of truth and you can see um, this current state of your application. It allows you to easily test different cases or states um, with React uh, through things called stories. I will be demonstrating that soon. And it also allows you to visually inspect components. You can add on a lot of, um, there are a lot of add-ons and extensions for Storybook that allow you to test things, to show extra information about your components, to give you context around it, to show the code itself. Um, it's really useful to have one place to just see where all the separate elements of, of your code or your website or your application are. Um, so I just wanna run through a few development processes that often come up in writing code, especially writing code for the web. Uh, this whole entire talk is about testing. Why test? Testing is especially important when you are writing a lot of code, whether you're the only developer or there are multiple developers, whenever you're building things for the web, there is an end consumer and it's important that that customer that user, that viewer gets things that aren't broken. They get things that work, that are consistent, that when you update things, it doesn't break other things. Uh, this is why we test. Testing, first and foremost, is almost always a manual product. No matter what you make, you'll always look at what it ends up being. When you're building larger things, you often have like continuous integration involved. You have other people QAing your product, testing, um, encompasses a lot of different workflows. And the good thing about Storybook is that it can fit in a lot of those. So who here has worked with test-driven development? It's something we do front-end, back-end, glad to see it. 
So test-driven development is when you write your tests before your code, you, you write about the requirements, the things your code needs to do, you expect your, your tests to fail, and you know that you've written a working piece of code when your tests pass. So TDD, test-driven development, is kind of a, it, it has been a standard for a lot of these other development practices. So we have behavior-driven development, which is a version of test-driven development with the test written and focused on the user's perspective, rather than, because your user is oftentimes the most important part of your product. It's important uh, to know how they think and that your code is not just functional, but functional for your users. This is a, another similar development process, component-driven development, heavily inspired or influenced by atomic design. It's, um, it's a part of building the smaller parts of the whole. Component-driven development um, is very popular among the web. That's why you see it in CSS modules, um, React components, JSS modules. Uh, Storybook-driven development, also known more generally as style guide-driven development, um, is kind of a combination of a lot of those. So your tests, because in test-driven development, a lot of times your tests will be unit tests. You know, you'll check for an output depending on an input. Test-driven development often has not worked very well for the front end. Um, just because if you're writing HTML, like what is the output of a div? Oftentimes it's visual. And that is the beautiful part of storybook-driven development is that you can write tests as stories, as a visual expectation, um, and you can continue developing until your tests pass. So I want to demonstrate that a little bit. One moment. So I built an extremely simple weather app. Um, super basic, right now has a login screen, later on has a web screen, and it came along with a storybook. And so this is both component-driven design um, and storybook driven design, d driven development. And all of the components for my app are right here in one place. It has a URL. Right now it's locally hosted. You can host it on a site, share it with other developers. Um, and here you can see all of the elements of a site as well as the different states. So we have a header right here, which is just one component, but as you know, one component can have many different states depending on what the user is currently doing. And Storybook gives you one place to look at all of these. Um, all right. So I had a plan of, uh, of making of making an element with Storybook, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna go through with that because I'm very nervous right now. And live coding is a lot. <laughs> nah, I might show some more examples of tests going forward. So you can use stories as a form of test-driven development, but you can also incorporate other forms of UI testing into your Storybook itself. So one form of testing is structural testing. Structural testing um, is making sure that the actual DOM of your components um, hasn't significantly changed. It makes sure that if you write some code and you changed it somewhere, that a button or another element just didn't completely go missing because it will render your code, not visually, but um, you know, it'll render the code, the HTML, and it will compare the two. So what um, Storybook does that through a story shots add-on, and I'm going to show that right now. So, all right, one moment. Uh,
wild. Um, trying to screen share, please give me one moment. Um, it's like doing a split screen thing. So I'm showing how. I'm gonna reshare. So should do it. All right, cool. One second. Okay. So here we have one second. We have a storybook app. It, I wanted to make it a simple enough app that I could write the code or share the code live, but one hour is never enough for a multi-state React app, it seems. Um, but let me go through the app, what it does, and what some of these tests start looking like. So right here we have a weather app, and I intentionally made it with several states. So right, right now we're in a logged out state, right? Um, the whole app kind of lives here. And we have two main pieces. We have a header right here and a kind of content screen. So once we log in, it's not a very secure app. Uh, we have a forecast, which tells the day, shows a nice little cloud um, and a temperature. So I'm going to, one second. Mm -hmm. So story shots um, integrates with this thing called Jest testing, which is a form of unit test for React. So um, I'm going to run some tests right now, and we're going to see if these actually will even work. Yikes. Did not. <laughs> we're just going to skip this slide, and we're going to move on. So. Structural testing is nice, but um, it's not a very visual way to test. Uh, the only times that it really works for visual regression testing is if your code is lit, is if your um, styling is literally in the code, ideally through inline code or styled components. So the next type type of testing we have in is interaction testing, um, and Storybook offers quite a few options with this. So we have Storybook actions which will um, show you the actual results of typing something into an input, pressing a button. Um, and then there's also a plugin called Specs where you can literally write tests and it will show up in a tab. So um, for example, I have this on a button. This is super simple. We have a primary button here, and this is helpful for debugging. A, I can see the button, I can share the button, and when I click it, I can see exactly what happened when I click this button. I'm going to show what this looks like in the code. So in for Storybook, we have all these components. Um, here's my button component. Something really simple, really small. It's just a button, you click it. Um, and next to the button, this is where our story lives. And um, here, with Storybook, you import your component, you import the styles, and then you can add all of your stories here. So I have a standard button, I have a dark theme, which we'd have to create. Um, and you can also add actions here so whichever action your actual um, component is connected to, whether that's on click or another different type of prop, uh, you add it here, you name it. So I named this button click. If I named it something like button press, um, it would update and show up. If I click here, this is just the name of the action and it kind of shows that I did this. Um, it can get a lot more complex than this. Oh, yes, 100%. Sorry about that. 
One second. Um, okay. <laughs> Apologies. Cool. So this is an example of interaction testing, but another more powerful version of testing is visual regression testing. So with visual regression, um, this tool will automatically render the app, take a picture of um, take a picture of all the components, and continually compare them. So in this app, we're using a tool called Loki. Let me try something. One second. Okay. So, yikes. It does not like what I'm doing, but I, this is actually a good thing. So, here, as you can see, it has this huge list of components. And these are like all of the components that I've made, all of the separate components and their separate states and possibilities. Um, it'll go through them and compare screenshots. Uh, ideally, they pass, but if they don't, you can look at them and see whether you want to update the references or if you actually have a mistake, then it would have automatically caught it. So we can go here in our diffs and Loki will render um, versions of your app for all these different screen sizes and devices. So Chrome, uh, you can run these tests through Selenium, run them on IE Explorer so that you don't have to literally pick up a Windows machine, open it, try to run your app and see if things break in IE 10, which they always will. Um, okay. So apparently this has caught a movement that I made. So I moved, um, I moved these components over a little bit and I did not update and let's try to zoom in. I did not update my test, so it shows me the old, um, the old location plus the new one, and it tells me it tells me all of these buttons have moved, which is very useful because um, when you're making websites, five pixels, ten pixels makes a huge difference. Um, I'm gonna say though, looking at Storybook and looking at my app, I'm okay with the position of where these are. So I'm going to say run. Okay. It's going to go through, retake all the pictures of the app. Of course, the more complex your app is, the longer this takes because it's literally, you know, rendering your app and taking pictures of it, storing those pictures, visually comparing them. Um, for this case, it's using a local tool on my computer. It's using just a regular image comparing app, um, Image Magic. There are a lot of other professional services, one of which is Kaleidoscope, another one is Chromatic, which is built by the Storybook team. And these will um, visually, these will compare diffs using machine learning because sometimes pixel, pixel um, matching will not give you an accurate result. You can get a lot of false positives if you have site animations, which is a thing to be careful of, or if you have like anti-aliasing, it will, um, it will tell you that things are different even though they're the same. So we've updated, and now if I were to run this tool again to compare, hopefully we get some better results. So it's going through, it's working, and it's done. No errors. Um, my app has matched what I want it to match. Um, if I were refactoring my code, Say I made some stories and they were all in HTML and I wanted to port my app to React um, and I decided to rewrite all the backend code into React. It would compare and just make sure that even though the code has changed, everything looks the same. Um, so one more thing 
I set this to false because animations will really mess with a, will mess with visual regression testing. But if I were to leave these in, we have something that looks like this. So another thing about this, I gave it some states. I also gave it some options. So say you have a daily forecast here. If you wanted to see the weekly forecast, we could bring that up. We could make sure that everything looks OK, that um, the sizes are correct. Um, yeah. I wanted to get more into manipulating this app, but I don't think I can give enough context for the changes I want to make. So I want to keep this a higher level overview of what Storybook can do, um, what it looks like, uh, and yeah. Oh, one other cool feature I didn't get to. Um, you can also view additional info. That is messed up. One second. Let's try this. You can view additional info about each of your components right here in the app, which makes it a great source of documentation. So it will show me what the story source looks like. So I could copy this code, put this somewhere else. It makes my components more movable. It will also show me information about the prop types. So I know the defaults that will be fed into this component. Um, so just to recap, um, Storybook allows you to test things as you go. It allows you to know what every component of your app looks like before you build it and while you're building it. Um, it helps you automate things. It helps to catch changes that might have otherwise have fallen through the cracks. I do have some time, so I guess I can show how we would kind of make something. One second. Um, sorry, I think I'm, I think I'm all set. Do folks have questions for Apple? We pass around the microphone just so the recording can pick it up. So let me just uh, do some rounds. Uh, first of all, big round of applause. That was. Okay, so do you mind repeating the question as best you can when we, oh, oh, no, we got one. All right, <laughs> the box. I could throw this at somebody, but I'm not very athletic with throwing. Um, we have some questions back here. Where, where were we at? Right here. Hi, oh, wow, this is cool. Um, do you have experience using Storybook with stateful components? For example, uh, components that are hooked up to Redux or some other state framework um, and suggestions for how that works? Sure thing. Um, so Storybook does, will definitely work with components um, hooked up to Redux. Oh, sorry, let me repeat the question. So, oh, no, I don't have Yeah, to. I don't think you have to. I'm speaking Do to this it, box. Isn't that? Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let me think and put together my answer. One second. So yeah, um, the thing about Storybook is that you write your stories, right? So let me give a better example. It's header stories. So you import whatever component it is that you're using. So presumably you would 
to think whether you'd import a connected or unconnected component. Um, you'd import your component here, and then you could give it whatever states or props that you want to, just to show like a very, like, to, sh you know, to show what inputs that you wanted so that you wouldn't have to necessarily connect it to the Redux itself. The storybook works more on the presentational side of things. So it, you would kind of feed it the data and storybook would show how your component handles the presentational aspect of it, um, which is important. Um, yeah. Thank you, I think that answers my question, yeah, thank you. Okay, because another thing too is that with the stories, the stories are also literally React elements, so I could put whatever constants, I could import whatever I wanted here. This is an isolated environment. So if I wanted to like add extra data here, uh, not super helpful, let's see. Yeah, because this isn't the smartest component. Um, but whatever data I wanted to use or manipulate or import from, I could, and it wouldn't affect that component in the actual app itself. So, yeah. Uh, hi, Axel, thank you for, thank you for your talk. Um, so since Storybook is an isolated testing environment, how is it integrated into like a production environment like at HubSpot, for example? Are these written before you make the components or after? Um, that's a good question. Well, Storybook, first and foremost, um, is a development tool. So you can, it, um, let me show. Like in the package JSON, it's a, um, it's a development dependency. So it is not packaged with the production side of your app, although it is served on a server, so you can serve it to a URL. Um, in Storybook-driven development, you kind of write the stories first. For example, for the button, I would import the component, kind of place whatever content and props that I want to, sh that I want to see, um, spin up the storybook server, which will only be present on my development machine, and then I can start building out my button. So this button, the theme is like, uh, it's a dark theme, while this, um, this one hasn't quite been built like that, but it has the prop here. So I could go back, edit my CSS and my states and my um, like conditional rendering so that this, whenever a button has this set of like data and props and inputs, it reacts the way I want it to and I can see it here. Um, did that answer your question? Uh, yeah, I did. Thank you. Glad I could help. Hey, Axel. Uh, I'm Mike Bifolco. You and I talked a bit on Twitter about Gymnasium's uh, storybook that we use. Yes. Uh, so my, my question is about Loki. Uh, I'm curious how that works in like team environments. So for, particularly with the, the step you showed around when tests go bad, having to validate that the changes were good. If, let's say, I was uh, accepting a pull request from someone on a new component or an update to a component on my team, how do I make it so that they can't just say, yeah, the changes in uh, the visual state are good and, and sort of force it through uh, CI on their own? Do you know anything about that? So like integrating Loki with um, a CI or like a CI workflow? Yeah, how, like how does that work with multiple people, I guess? Absolutely. So um, if you're working with multiple people, you'd ideally want Loki to be run not on an individual server like this, but through um, through your CI, you'd want to connect it to a GitHub or a whatever kind of action. Um, the thing about that, sorry, Loki has um, a set of commands that you can run that you can place there, so that um, so that it would have to run with the pipeline and not through the developer. And then I guess after that, it's just about having like, um, what is it, reviewers? Yeah. Like re being required to push something through? Got it. Okay, so, so like the Loki server can run 
somewhere that's not on the dev, dev environment, presumably. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, cool. Loki, um, let me see if I can show you. Mm. I, uh, yeah, actually. Loki just takes the port or um, site that um, it takes the port that Storybook runs on and then looks at that. So it's actually running more from the Storybook server than the code itself. Um, and then you can add in configurations here, you can add the browsers and the, um, the dimensions that you want to use to test. Oh, thanks. Sure. Others? Oh, where? Um, first of all, uh, great talk. Thank you. Uh, so I have two questions. So first one would be like, how manual is that documentation process that you have on your website? And your, I see your build time is about 11 seconds. What has that been like for your development team? Like what other uh, overhead has you experienced by using Storybook? From using Storybook. Oh, like whether like there's like latency or like yeah, that like, kind of slows uh, me down? You, are, you say, you write your unit, your, your storybook test first, and then you try to match your uh, your components to or pass your storybook test. What is the latency between like, the hot rolling, the hot reloading time, I should say? Okay, um, the latency for storybook itself is not too bad. Yeah. And when we talk about like test driven development, there are two two kind of parts to that. So one is writing the stories itself. The stories render incredibly quickly. For example, I'm just gonna try to spin one up because I have some time. So we have a button. Each of these stories have names here, dark theme. I could be like, add, I'm gonna name this one sample. We're gonna have a button here. Consistency. Um, that's it. I save and it's right there. Well, it disappeared, but it's right there. This process is pretty fast. It's almost as instant as can be, so it doesn't slow down too much. The Loki um, process does take a while just because it's taking pictures, it's diffing. Um, Loki is a, lo a local environment as like a local tool, in this case especially. So it's running on whatever machine it's running on. So um, so you're limited by your literal hardware. If working on a really large app and you have it a part of a CI process and it's like running every time you deploy, that's when people will often, um, will often use a, like a service. So you have Chromatic, what was the other one? Uh, Kaleidoscope is one and it will, um, it will run this visual test on a dedicated server, on an AWS server. It will parallel, parallax it or whatever. And then your times will be running a lot faster and you won't just be running on a local machine. Uh, cool flex up. All right, glad I could. Uh, I actually have a quick question. So, sure. um, like, so I'm, I'm new to this whole world. So uh, storybook driven development, that's a whole new term to me, I love it. Um, it seems like a really great local development tool to kind of prototype these things really quickly. Now, in your experience, have you ever actually like deployed this somewhere to a central location? So this can serve as kind of like a pattern library or a component library for other people to use, or is it mostly used as a local development tool to help you kind of build the stuff out as you're designing your apps? Um, I've mostly used it locally. So I personally have not deployed it onto a site, but it can be easily a lot of design systems actually use Storybook as their documentation because it is, and I know we all like to say self-documented code, which sometimes is a little faker uh, than we really say it is, but um, it kind of gets as close to self-documented code as you can. Um, you can automatically show the info and the style guide there. Uh, so a lot of companies will, I could probably show an example, 
they will put their component library on Storybook because then it allows people to play with it, see everything in one place, in like an organized way. Um, I feel like there's usually a list, but no, a lot of companies use it. But yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Do you have any other before ask questions? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.